Okay, we're almost there. You know, what we've done is we've installed our grommets on the ends of our net. And now the next step is to put a suspension on this thing so that we can put a ridge line through it. Now, I'm not going to go through all the suspension options. I'm just going to focus on the one that I like personally and the one that I think is uh, best for, for new folks coming into the hammock uh, hanging community. Uh, you, you're going to get hit with a lot of information on a lot of stuff. Uh, whoopee slings and UCRs and dog bones and a whole bunch of stuff. Keep it simple right at the beginning, okay, so that you don't get frustrated. And uh, the system I like best is the cinch buckle system. Uh, if you're over six years old, you know how to use a belt buckle. Okay? Start with that basis, because that's what a cinch buckle does. Cinch buckle also has the advantage that if you use some other hardware, which I'll show you, you won't be walking away from a tree, leaving a tree strap hanging on it, and then finding out about it 15 miles later when you set up tomorrow night's camp. So that has an advantage. For an old fart like me, it's less fiddly. I don't have to see as well, uh, you know, especially in the dark, pulling on little small things or hooking little things. I got something big that I can see, that I can grab, that I can pull. Okay? So let's take a look. Okay, this is a cinch buckle. It takes two of them to get the job done. Now I get these from an outfit called Ready Strap from a guy named Gary. Now Gary, he's, he's semi-retired. He, he's doing something that all of us want to do and he's building a house in the woods that he can retire in. Uh, but he he's opens up his shop and you can order from him online. The good thing about ordering from Gary is he's got super fast delivery and his cinch buckles are about a dollar a pair or less than where you can find them elsewhere. Now what a cinch buckle does is when it's attached to the end of a strap, it lets you take the end of another strap and just run it through and pull it tight like that, just like a belt. Okay, under uh, uh, the best circumstances, you, you can't uh, pull the strap back out. Usually it's a good idea to tie a knot in the line behind the buckle just to make sure. Okay? There's a couple of different ways to get these straps on the end of your hammock. We're going to show you several of them right now. Okay, the simplest method uh, is to get in contact with Gary at Ready Strap and ask him to make you a pair of quick draw locking loads and ask to use the 1500 or 3000 pound webbing on it. He's got a 500 pound webbing, it should be adequate to the task, but you know, you want to make sure. And all that is, is about a six inch piece of webbing, it's double stitched on it here. You can see it's very little uh, movement on it. He's got a piece of rubber here to, to cover up the ends and frayed ends. And what you're going to do is, is you're going to take that rope that came with your hammock fish it back through the channel or if this is something you intend to do from the jump don't take it out just take off that stupid line lock they got on there run one end of the rope through the through the through the quick draw get it down close to the hammock pull it tight and tie a good old knot Okay, I'm not going to tell you what kind of knot. There's somebody out there screaming saying that should be a sheep shank. And there's somebody else saying no, it should be a half hitch. And no, it should be this. And no, it should be that. I'm going to tie a granny knot in this thing. All I'm doing is illustrating the concept. Okay, I encourage you to go out and uh, study knots. Okay, this is just a quick thing to show you the concept here of tying a quick draw on the end of your hammock. Okay, this will likely work. I've had a hammock like this that worked for three years uh, that I'm still using. So, hasn't failed me yet. And all I did was put a granny knot in the end of it. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And it's probably the easiest. Okay, now the next step 
is uh, you can get a continuous loop, what's called a continuous loop. This is made out of AM steel. It's got like a 1,500 pound braking strength. And it's uh, made in such a manner that you can run one end of the, the line right into the middle of the line and splice it together. Uh, it makes it twice as strong and uh, gives you something that you can attach your cinch buckle to. Now the way you do that is you is you larks head it on to the end of your your cinch buckle. Now, just, all you do is just stick it through and, and loop it through, okay? But that causes movement back and forth, which will eventually slice that am steel. So what you want to do is is you want to run it through a couple of times so that you can take up all that space. So you run it through like this, get it centered. And then come through the bird's beak. Okay, so now you're four times. You get four thicknesses here. But it's still moving back and forth, so you got to go through one more time. Okay, well now it's not moving, but we've got a very, very short continuous loop. Starting off with an 8 inch continuous loop like this is not what you want to do. You can either make your own loops or you can buy them at a number of sources online. Uh, I'll put some of them down in the uh, comment section. You want to work with a 12 or 20 inch line so that you don't have a very, because this is going to pass through all the way through. The okay, channel. another thing you can do uh, with an 8 inch a continuous loop and a lock and load, a little bit safer than, than tying knots in the rope that came with the hammock, you take that continuous loop and you pass it through and then do what we did before. We talked about a lark's head knot. Just pull that around your, try to get it centered on the loop and the lock and load. Now you've got enough uh, material here that it will run through the channel. Let me run it through and I'll show you. Okay, so here we are. That continuous loop has been run all the way through the channel. All you need to do is take that lock and load, stick it through there, and pull it up tight. And there you go. you got a cinch buckle suspension on your hammock. Now this is just one of the ways of doing it. Uh, I'm going to fix to show you the one I like the most. Okay, now these are a couple of cinch buckles I just took off of a hammock. Uh, they're kind of long. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, I had these on a 12 foot long hammock and it just made things a little bit... Uh, I had to find trees a little bit too far apart when using these, so I took them off the 12 footer. Uh, the advantage you get out of these is the thickness. These are called racer loops or racer slings. They're made out of Dyneema. It's about a quarter inch wide. And, and very thick. Uh, this is climbing gear. People rely on their lives hanging from, from the sides of mountains using these things. Uh, should be no problem at all hanging from the trees on it. And the thing I like about it, because of the width, I only have to go through once to take up all the space in the, uh, in the buckle and I don't get that slide back and forth where it'll cut. Let me fish this through here and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, here we go. What we've got is we've got our racer loop all the way through the channel and out the other side. And here we've got our, our Zing It adjustable ridge line. And uh, we're going to put in an adjustable ridge line, and then later on, if you want to, you can put in a permanent ridge line. And I'm going to send you over to Suge Emery's uh, YouTube channel to look at his video for ridge lines. I I'm not going to sit there and tell you all about ridge lines when Suge can do it much better. But all you're going to do is you're going to stick that ridge line, go on the inside of your hammock, come through your grommet hole like so and then run your Dyneema through it and then run your cinch buckle through that 
Tighten her all up. Make sure it's kind of centered. Just like that. Okay, so here we go. Here's the view inside the finished hammock. Now it's a little tight for me, just about six feet. But I believe I can get a decent night's sleep in here. How about you? Won't cost you but about forty, fifty dollars to get the whole project done. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on your hardware options. Give it a shot. See what you can do. Talk to you down the trail. All right, now I'm going to show you one thing that I did here. It's my fault and not the fault of the hammock. But I got into it again and uh, thought I was sitting on the hammock when I was sitting on the bug net. And I'm glad the camera wasn't on because I went ass over tea kettle to do it. But in the process, I tore the netting. Uh, still work as a one-way zipper and I'll see what I can do to repair that. But... Uh, Again, that's my fault, not the fault of the hammock. I don't think that net was designed to carry a 220-pound old man. <laughs>